Hey, welcome to my channel and Happy New Year. Let's all say 2021, you've got to be better to us than 2020 was. It's got to be. It's just got to be. So, today we're going to show you my traditional New Year's dinner. Um, a number of you said you'd like to see that because some of you don't know what hog jowls are or that you would even eat a hog jowl just because it's called that <laughs> and collard greens um, you may not even know what collard greens are and if you do maybe you're not sure how to um, cook them so some of you said yeah you'd like to see that and I thought well you know what it's a good way for me to share part of who I am deep down inside this is this is how I was raised in my southern universe <laughs> I know everybody has their own traditions so down in the box below if you want to share what your New Year's Day traditional meal is if you're where you're from or your heritage you know did you always do that as a kid is it something you started doing as an adult now growing up now we always had the black eyed peas that's for the coins we always had the greens that's for the green money we always had the pork don't know to this day what the pork is for but you had the pork and what we had was fried pork chops now when I got married we started having the hog jowls so that's what we've always done and then we add rice to ours and then cornbread if we want cornbread which I'm thinking I'll have some cornbread today too so <laughs> Listen, I need to get that out of my system before this low-carb starts because that is definitely not in the low-carb family. Um, it's a whole grain. The cornmeal is a whole grain, but it's not um, in the way I eat it. Whatever we don't eat in the meal ends up in a big old glass of milk, and I can't help myself. Cornbread and milk, leftover cornbread, to have cornbread and milk is to me like a box of little debbies i cannot leave it sitting it is a huge temptation so i might just go ahead and do that today get it out of my system i normally have it when i have pinto beans but listen i like greens and i like my green juice on the cornbread too so <laughs> anyway um I hadn't started yet. A lot of times I'll film these intros after I've already done what I'm going to do. So I don't know how long it took me. I, I just will tell you, um, which I'll probably mention it again because, you know, sometimes you just do that. If you're making collard greens, real collard greens, not the kind that I get in the freezer that I have just for, you know, during the week. A uh, 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 bunch of real collard greens is not something you want to do on a weeknight because it's time consuming you got to wash them like i wash them three times and then you got to cut them rip them whatever you do to them to get them fixed so it's um something i'm going to start earlier today it's already close to 11:30, so lunch is going to be late um but i was going to tell you david's out in the garage he's um working on an old engine block a few years ago he rebuilt his pickup truck and he saved the old block out of it so he's just doing you know man stuff to it <laughs> but I know when he went out yesterday I had to run out over to RJ's to take him his thing and I come back and he I went in the house and I didn't even notice the garage door open didn't even pay attention because he's been in the house all week and so when I couldn't find him I looked out the kitchen window and the door was open I'm like okay I know he's had enough rest because he he probably started going stir crazy. He relaxed, he rested, he rested his body. Then he would decide to go outside yesterday and he's back out there again today. So I know he had a good vacation. I know he had a good restful time. And I didn't bother him and now he's doing something he wants to do. That that's part of his vacation too. Having time to to play to play i asked him today because i knew i wanted to film my my meal prep and everything for you my supper prep whatever you want to call it um i asked him i said are you going out to play today he said yeah he didn't even think twice about it because he just knows that that's just something i would say so anyway that that's all i'm gonna say we'll um show you what that i grew up on 
and what my kids grew up on my kids that's all they know for new year's day what we're going to have today that's what they know that's what they grew up on um they're both doing their own thing today so a lot of times they would come over you know since they've been grown and out of the house but they got their own little things going on and uh that's good too that's good too they set their own i know holly's working rj they, they can set their own um family traditions um, that's a part of watching them grow up and get their own little their own little lives <laughs> sometimes it, it's rough but we gotta let them go um, and eventually we'll get our Christmas together too I tell you we're gonna have our Christmas maybe for Easter I've got my Christmas gifts for our Santa and dirty, dirtier, dirty Santa and dirtier Santa, I got my gifts all bagged up, ready to go. I got my little funky um, candy cane game, ready to go. I got my little Dollar Tree um, picture props. I got them ready to go. So <laughs> we'll get around to it. Like I said, 2021, you've got to be better to us than 2020 was. So, Happy New Year. I hope you enjoy this video. And like I said, let me know down below what your New Year's Day traditions are. So, let's go in the house and get started. Okay, let's start first thing on our collard greens because they're going to have to cook a while. I, I like to, um, I don't know how long they cook. I'm one of them. Somebody will say, how long do you cook it? Until it's done. That's <laughs> that's how I do it. So, but it probably take at least an hour just the cooking time. It's gonna take us some getting ready time, but it'll take a, a good long cooking time because we like them tender. Um, and in case you don't know what a collard green looks like, when you buy them, now there used to be a man down the street in the country who you would just go buy whole collard green plants. These have been picked. It's just a I mean, a big old stalk, and these are just the leaves, and so the leaves have already been picked. You would just go back your truck up, or your car with your trunk, whatever, and he would just lob off the whole plant, and just throw the whole plant in the back of your truck, and then you just come home, sit out on the backyard, and work up your greens. <laughs> but, if you buy them in the store, I don't know if you can see, look at the size of that. Can you see how big that is? See the difference. These were the two biggest packs. Now they're not they're not by the pound, they're by the bundle, by the bunch. This was 99 cents. So I'm gonna get the most for my money. See this gigantic big bunch? So when you pick them out, if they're not by the pound, go for the biggest um bundle you can get because you want to get more for your money. Because this will make a lot, but they will cook down. Trust me. You're not going to get as many greens as you're seeing right here. So the first thing I do, let me go ahead and unbundle these, is I like to cut mine before I wash them because I think they wash better. Um, then I'll have to bother washing the stems or nothing. Now, a lot of people will eat the stems. We don't like the stems. We just don't like them. So I'm going to show you how I get rid of them the easiest way I have found. I'm going to get you your big bowls. If you got big bowls, if not, get you some um, dish pans from the Dollar Tree. They'll work just as good. Just as long as you got something big to hold them in before you take them to the sink. So, just start. Hold on a minute. You can come in. Otherwise, you're going to be standing there for days. So what I do is, I just take them, bend them together like that, with the um, stems on the side, and just rip them right down the middle, and then rip the stem off. So do that to every one of them. <laughs> so that's what I told you out there in the intro. Oh, look at that, I threw the wrong thing away. Let me get my right hand going the, the right direction. This is a labor of love. This is not something you're going to do on a weeknight when you're just walking in the door from work and think, oh, I want some collard greens. No, this is why country folks grow them, works them up, and puts them in the freezer. That way they're ready to go. 
Now those little stems, those are fine. So let me just, you can do it like that too, you can. What, however you do it, just grab it and peel that off. stems have been stripped I like to go ahead and chop them up I don't like big some people I know cook, cook them like that because I eat them like that and you eat big long strings of greens I don't like that we like ours chopped now you could be a little bit more um, neat when you rip it off and you can stack them up you can roll them you can you know do, that's too much that's too much trouble just get you a big wad Just go down through there and then come back and go the other way to break up any long pieces. I don't know if you can see, that's, that's a good size right there, how we like them. So we're going to do that to all of these. Now you can see I've got both of my greens cut and ready to wash. As much as you might think you want to skip this step, I promise you, you do not want to skip the washing step. These things are dirty. They're gritty. They're grown in the ground, obviously, but then like when it rains and it splashes that dirt up, they get up under the underside of the leaves, the whole nine yards. You do not want to eat gritty collard greens. So meet me over at the sink. Now here is another step you do not want to skip. Disinfecting your sink because we're going to put these right down in the sink. So you be sure and clean that sink really good. And if you got a grease monkey husband in the backyard in the garage, you threaten him within an inch of his life if he washes his dirty old <laughs> greasy hands in your clean sink. <laughs> so I'm just letting the water start running. And I will go ahead and put all of these in one side. And what I do, this is what I like to do. Get them down in the water. I like to, this is just my kosher salt. Just, you know, your big salt. I like to salt them because I get it open. Oh, did I show you? I was off camera. I just like to put a good amount of salt. Because I think the, um, Scrubbing action is good to help get rid of some of the grit. And then we put our other half in there. I like to do like both the hot and the cold water together simply because cold water hurts your hands. <laughs> and I think warm water helps loosen the um, dirt. So. Work your salt in around it. Let them get good and covered. You like to agitate them a little bit to help loosen it up. Okay, now leave that sit. I don't know five or ten minutes you can clean up the mess that you made over there on the other part cutting them just to um if there's any like dried on dirt grit whatever give it time to loosen up so i'll be back um when it's time for that 
All right, now while these have set, I, I come over here a couple of times and just kind of, you know, wash through them. I'm filling the other side up with fresh, clean water. I just want to lift them out and put them over in this water because we're going to give them a second washing. see I don't know if you'll be able to see any grit on the bottom of the sink or not okay well there's I there's no way I could show you with the camera but I can see um, all kind of dirt and grit and stuff all around the outside of the sink so we'll just let that sit just long enough to clean this side up you can wash your sink down real good before you put the next um, back in the next um, cleaning because you don't want to add it to a dirty sink just defeat the purpose of what you just did so these were pretty clean so this will be I'm just gonna wash them three times if you have really dirty ones that have been out in the middle of a rainstorm you're gonna have to wash them how many every time it takes that, that's all I know how many every times you need to wash them will be however dirty they are but I think ours will be good here in, in three three washings I'm just going to get them out. I'll put that over there. And just put them in our bowl. Now that these are good and clean, we are ready to cook them. So now I will meet you over at the stove. Okay, I went ahead and put some water on. I don't have much, just about yay much in the bottom of the um pot the greens will give off some water but what i want to add to it first is i like to go ahead and add my fat back to the water and let it boil a little bit to get out some of that flavor instead of just dumping it in with the greens so fat back in case you don't know it you can see it full of salt there's a rind side this is the rind i like to, this is not a very big piece hold on there we go so you can see the rind right there I like to, and you can do it on a cutting board, but I already have my scissors dirty from opening the pack. I just like to score it all the way up to the rind, and I'll probably just cut it in two. I think it lets off more, you can see how tough that is. I think it lets out more flavor like that. So I'm gonna add a couple more of those. This is just how I do it. Um, everybody makes their greens different, but this is how I do it. I think maybe one more little tiny one. That ain't really hardly nothing to score there. Okay, so that's our fat bag. And I, I buy it already sliced because it's just easier that way. Oh, let me get some of that greasy salt off that delicious greasy salt <laughs> now I add a little bit of salt you can salt them more at the table pepper and then I always like to add a little pinch of sugar not much just a little bit I think it gives it a little something now we're gonna let this boil I'll look at the clock, and when it looks like the way I want it to look, I'll tell you how long it took. How about that? All right, so it took like two minutes. Let me find one of the big ones. See how it just starts to curl and open up and just start to turn a little bit opaque? That is good enough for me. That is enough for me to get it started, um, taking that flavor out. 
Now, you obviously cannot put two bowls of greens in this pot. <laughs> it's not going to work. What you have to do is you have to work it in stages. So you put a good bit, enough down in the bottom to um, get in the water. You let that boil until it wilts. And you add more on top. Okay, see how um, dark they turned and how um, limp they got? So now we can go ahead and add some more in. And push them down in there, get them down in the water. Now we're going to keep doing that until all the greens are done. And let me just go ahead and warn you, if you've never cooked a collard green, your house going to stink. <laughs> Anybody that has ever eaten a collard green and been in a house where they have been cooked, if they walk in your back door, they're going to say, Oh, you're cooking collards? And you say, Yep, sure I am. So if you don't like the smell of bitter collard greens, it cooks the bitter out. And I'm going to tell you, the bitter will go into the juice. The juice is what they call the pot liquor. You can choose to, we'll talk about it later too, you can choose to, after you get them all boiled down, to change it and do it with fresh water. But see, that that gets rid of the way I do it with the fat back in there and the sugar and the salt. That gets rid of all that flavor. Let's say if you just cook them without anything in it to begin with, you can boil that bitter out, change the water, and then boil them fresh. I don't um, do that. So... I was saying, if you don't want your house stinking up like collard greens, light you a candle. All right, now that everything has wilted down in there, I'm not adding no more water. You will watch it as it goes while it's cooking. You watch it for water, but them greens is gonna let off some water. And I like to, when, when they get done to the tenderness I like, I like to keep boiling them down till the um, liquid goes away, till they're almost dry. That's when they taste the best to me. And so it takes a little, long, a little longer to do it than if you just eat them straight out of the liquid, but a lot of people like that liquid, like I said, I like bean juice, um, green juice on my cornbread. There'll still be enough when I get my vinegar on it. It'll be uh, good enough for me. Some people like to actually take that um, green liquor out of there and just pour it on their cornbread or just drink it. And a lot of people do that. So we're going to turn this down. If you do add water, add hot water. Don't take down the, woo, that scream, screech. Don't take down the heat of your greens. Add hot water to it if you need to, but take it down. I don't want it boiling, boiling, but a good simmer. And let's see, it is 12.25. I'm telling that to myself, so when I edit this, in case I forgot when they're done, how long it took, <laughs> then I'll be able to tell you. While well, the greens is cooking, I'm going to go ahead and do my pinto. Nope. My black eyed peas, this is just a half a pound. I, when I get the pound packages, when the kids were home, I cooked the whole pound. So now me and David, I just do a half a pack. I just go ahead and separate them out into little baggies. I just put enough water in it to cover them up real good. So you can see about, this is my three quart. Then these are not soaked, obviously. They only take 15 minutes. So... Shut that vent. 15. That's the last thing I cooked in there was because um, I have some left that David took to his mama's the other day. But since I need some for my soup for prep, I'm afraid we wouldn't have enough. And if we have too much, um, they freeze really, really well. Now let's scooch over. And over here, we're going to make our brown rice. So it is a cup of brown rice, not rinsed, and a cup and a half of water. I'll just do a little quick little stir. 
put the lid on turn it on that's it leave both of them just leave them be let them do their thing i have this listed down below um in my amazon list if you were interested in that it's a handy dandy little i did a video on it too i'll try to remember to link it but it shows how it cooks white rice brown rice and oatmeal so we're gonna let that go and while the greens are cooking still a little bit too early to start the hog jails i might go ahead and make my cornbread and then have it out of the way i think that's what i'll do the first thing i'll do for this cornbread now i have went ahead and put my bacon grease in the refrigerator because i hadn't been um using it as much so i thought well i would just store it so just get you two good old spoonfuls in your cast iron frying pan and while it is heating to 425 you want to put this in there and let that melt because we're going to pour it back into our batter so let me do that Now, for the cornbread, it's just pretty straightforward. Two cups of self-rising cornmeal mix. Not cornmeal. Cornmeal mix. Self-rising. So I need two cups of that. It's cold because I keep it in the freezer. <laughs> but I ain't never um, heard it, so I don't know that it would. Come on now. There we go. Then just some salt and pepper. Oh, I don't mean to reach in front of you. I'll use this right here. Oh my gosh, I had to cut away. That pepper went straight up my throat. And then just a pinch of sugar. How much ever sugar you think you want. Now, that is... Hold on a minute. There are two camps. There are sweet cornbread or not sweet cornbread. I make both. I like sweet cornbread. Some people say, oh, you ain't southern if you eat sweet cornbread. No, I'm a southern as the day is long. And I like sweet cornbread. So I'm going to tell you what kind of cornbread you bake. The kind you like. <laughs> now, I normally make it with um, buttermilk, but these days I don't have much calling to use buttermilk before it goes bad. So I keep this buttermilk powder, powdered buttermilk. It's got directions on the side about how much it makes, you know, if you want to do it properly, the proper measurements. So I just throw a couple tablespoons in there. You don't have to use buttermilk. It's just, it's good. So just kind of mix that stuff together. And we just need one egg. And let me get the milk. Now I'm using skim milk because that's what we drink. So just use whatever milk you want. And how much milk you put in is until it, <laughs> until it looks right. <laughs> This is how I like to cook. If I'm not writing a recipe, this is how I like to cook. By sight and by feel and by just because. But you do want it to kind of look like a cake batter. Okay, see, that's just the consistency. I like it. Now let me check and see if our um, bacon grease is melted. Okay, it was melted. We're just going to kind of grease the pan with it. 
pour it into our, oh, this is heavy, into our batter. Stir it around. And then dump it into our pan. I don't know how much in the frame I am. Now, don't ask me <laughs> how long to bake it. You bake it till it's done. Listen, I think that's the theme of today's meal. Everything cooks until it's done. So, back into the 425 degree oven. Okay, so these have been cooking about close to an hour and a half, I think. And I'm going to take the lid off now. If you can see, I don't know if you can see how tender they are from just that. But I'm taking the lid off and I'm just going to let it continue to keep boiling down until they're almost dry. So that'll take another, um, another good little bit. Okay, the collards are done. How I'm going to do it, I'm, I was getting some steam. But if you can see, I'm leaving that much liquid in there. I don't know if you can tell. Just enough there in the bottom so they don't completely dry out. So those are done. I will have to look at the clock and tell you exactly how long it took. The cornbread came out. It took it about 15 minutes. Now we're going to go over here and start on these hog jowls. All right, now the main event, the hog jowl. And if you, um, this just, you can get them sliced or whole and slice them yourself. Just go ahead and get them sliced because they are just like fat back. They're very aggravating to um, slice. Now, if you have watched my channel any length of time, you know I do not like touching raw meat. And I will wear gloves in a heartbeat. But... Fat back hog jails <laughs> don't bother me. I don't know if it, I mean it's greasy, but it's like smoked and it's pig. Pig don't bother pig don't bother me like beef and chicken does. So if you can see, can you see the shape of this? This is a jowl. J O W L a jowl. I called the jail. <laughs> this is a hog jail. This is the fat that comes off of his jail that hangs down on the side of his face. So, like I was saying on one of my other videos, you know, you get bacon from like the back or wherever you get the bacon from. This is just another form of bacon. I liken it to a cross between fat back and bacon or side meat. Side meat's got um, meat on it where fat pack does not so it's kind of like side meat and bacon together but it has its own little smoked flavor it does not taste like bacon it has its own absolutely delicious flavor i cannot describe it if um just the word hog jowl doesn't bother you i encourage you to get some but when i have a lot to make and these are big ones they don't always come out this big when I have a lot to make, I just bake them in the oven. Look how big that is. Because it's a whole lot easier and a lot less messy. Um, if you're just making a little bit, just go ahead and fry them on the stove, just like you do bacon. And here again, how long do you fry them? Or how long do you bake them? Until they're done. <laughs> Until they're done. David likes them um, crispier than I do. I like mine like I like my bacon. Still kind of um, flimsy. I don't want it um, raw but I do like it I don't like it hard and crunchy. David he likes his kind of hard and crunchy. So um, preheat your oven to 350. Now you can see the little ends and pieces down here in the don't throw none of it away now we'll drain the oil the grease off 
you're in the middle of it because they just bake better that way and spray your fall because believe you me this is pure fat but I have had it um, stick on me plenty so yeah these are a lot bigger than the ones I have gotten in the past so now we're just going to stick both of these in at 350 I'll probably go in there I'll look at them and they look like they're about halfway done to my liking I'll switch the racks drain the oil off and um, I'll show you I'll show you how much grease comes off of these things before I do drain that now this is after 25 minutes I, I let them go 15 minutes then I switch racks and let them go another 10 minutes and if you can see I know it's kind of bright but can you see how much fat that let off this is my peanut can that I keep in the freezer for just stuff like this so if you let it off drain it off part way through they cook a whole lot better Other one back here. Oh, my can, but I had to get a new can. So I'm going to put these back in there for another 10 minutes. Don't fall. and see what they look like all right these whole jams are done it i did i showed you when i drained them off 15 minutes i switched racks i did it for 10 more minutes then i switched racks back around and so that's 25 30 4 15 25 35 minutes to get these done now here's my little tip um when you get flour and sugar cornmeal whatever save your bags this was always what i did when we fried fish a lot and it's just a good thick um thing to soak up the extra grease and you didn't have to pay for it and you're getting to use it see what i tell you they've been known to stick Okay, well, y'all don't need to watch me get these up. As soon as these are up, everything else is done. I will make a plate and show you what all we've been working for today. I meant to tell you, did you notice how um, much they shrunk in the pan? But there you go. That's, that's how much we got. Now let's make our plate. Okay, here it is. Here is our traditional New Year's Eve dinner. Rice, black-eyed peas, hog jowls, cornbread, and greens. And yes, I have some of the fat back in there. David won't eat it, but boy, I will. Remember I told you the other day, Jack Spratt and his wife. <laughs> so this dinner, since everything was done the old-fashioned way, it took me four hours. So it's a special treat on New Year's Day. We're hoping it's going to bring us luck. Lots of money, lots of um, um, fortune, as in not necessarily money fortune, but good fortune in our um, life. So I wish all of y'all well, uh, a very happy new year, and thanks for spending a little bit of time with me to see what we do on New Year's Day. And I'll see you on my next video.